Welcome back. So in this video we're going to talk about the basics of creating objects and a little bit more in detail about the world space and uh, how you control objects in the viewport uh, in this lecture. So again, uh, this is our perspective view. Uh, to create objects in, in Maya, it's fairly easy. Uh, I prefer to go to the create menu and there are three kinds of objects, uh, basic objects that we're going to talk about today. Uh, there's NURBS primitive, polygon primitives, and volume primitives. Now, most of these uh, volume primitives are pretty much legacy. They're not really used heavily anymore. NURBS are still used by some, um, some folks. Um, but honestly, for the purposes of most of the stuff that we do nowadays, polygon primitives is the most commonly used. But there are three in there. Uh, again, I just want to point out that you got to be sure when I'm talking about creating something, unless I say otherwise, one likely I, I, you know, I'm talking about a polygon primitive. So just be sure that you go to the right spot um, because there is a sphere in all three of these and we want the sphere in polygon primitives. So I'm ho hover up to create, hover down, and I'm just hovering my mouse, I'm just moving it, not clicking on anything. And I'm going to hover over and I'll just pick the very first one here. I'll pick sphere. Now the default uh, creation method in Maya is just, it just creates it in the world space at the, what we call the origin. So I click this and a little sphere appears right in the center. And as I mentioned last time, we, this, uh, we don't see anything on the right because nothing's, nothing's in the scene. Now we can see things because this object is selected. If I click off of this, there's nothing there in the channel box. If I click back on the sphere and I'm just left clicking, click on the, on the sphere again, it highlights green and it shows some properties in the channel box. So that's cool, we have a sphere now. Now we can you know, move closer to it using alt right mouse to dolly our camera to, to get a little closer to the sphere and I'm alt left mouse to tumble around to look at it. Um, navigation around in the program is critical. Uh, be a digital, what I call a digital shark. Always be mo moving around, taking a look, looking at your stuff from all views. So we can see there's a sphere here. When, again, it's green when it's selected, and it's just that glorious gray color when it's not. So, uh, what can we do with this? Well, right now we're what's in called object mode. So we can manipulate this object in the world in object mode by using various tools. And I glossed over the toolbox on the left hand side um, over here. These are the tools. We'll use them quite a lot. But I glossed over them because again, uh, there are there are quick keys for this that make things a lot easier. Um, if you logged into the program and it's the same as mine, at least right now, you're on what the Q key, the Q key, the 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 quick button, the Q. So if you're on the Q key, it's just selection. So I can just click off, click off, on and off, and such. And it's highlighted already. This is the Q key, so select tool. If I select an object, or it actually I don't need to have an object selected at all, but if I click on it and I hit the W key, the next key on the keyboard right next to it, you get the translate tool. And you will now see a gnomon of little arrows appear on this object. So this is the translate nomen. These arrows denote the different uh, axes that are in the program. And again, we talked about this in the last lecture, that these denote directionality in the 3D world space. So if I click on an arrow, it will turn yellow. Um, and I can drag the arrow back and forth, and I can move this object around. So you can see, I move the object. And again, x is left and right. Blue, which is Z, is forward and back, and green is up and down. So a fancy way to remember this, RGB, XYZ. So again, R is X, blue is and green. So blue is Z, green is Y. So RGB, XYZ. So as I move these around, some of you may have noticed that these numbers now are changing in the channel box when I have it selected. And we can see that translate X has some numbers in it, translate Y has some numbers in it, translate Z has some numbers in it. Um, yours might be different than mine, but generally what these are, are these are its location and world space. So if we look at this grid, 
it defines a, a section in units. And the units are arbitrary. I can't remember what, exactly what the default is. I think I want to say it's centimeters, but I'm not 100% sure. But it doesn't really matter. You can change it at any point in time. Um, this is saying this is 2.8 units on mine over to the X and so on. So we can come in here and if we wanted to type numbers, and all I'm doing is left clicking on this number here, which highlights it. And if I type in, I don't know, let's say five, and then hit the enter key, I can move this object all the way to the five. And if I count this out from the origin lines here, which are these slightly darker lines, just count kind of one, two, three, four, five. Yep, sure enough, the center of the object which, where it's measuring it from is roughly five units to the right. If I change the Z, remember Z is forward and backwards, positives, positives always go in the directions of the arrows. If I change this to, let's say four, we can count now. Okay, one, two, three, four, five. Yep, still on the five. One, two, three, four, four over. Now, we don't see a vertical grid, I think it's, you know, because it'd probably be too visually confusing, but Y works the exact same way, it's just invisible. So if I come in here and I type in two, oops, wrong button. Good, good to see those problems though. If you see something like this, I had the object select when I hit two. You want to make sure you're on the one when you have the object selected. But if I hit two and translate Y, move that up. And then you can see, this is roughly, I have all this, it's two units up. If you want to be a 100% sure, you can go to your orthographic views and see in your other orthographic views how it's two units up. Again, we did that by tapping the space bar to switch between the full view and the four views. So tap the space bar and go back. So we can move this object around either using the nomen of the translate arrows, and I advise that you stick to the, the, the actual arrows, um, or we can use it numerically. So one's more precision, more drafting oriented, the other's more just, you know, grab it and move it and worry about it later kind of thing. Now you can click on the center of these arrows and move it, and you can also click on these little squares which locked to two axes when you move it. I'm not a huge fan of these for, st for beginning students. I suggest you just grab the arrows and move it around. As you get more experience, feel free to use them. So that's the translate tool. We can move this object around using the translate functions. Um, again, uh, this is done, you know, W key to enter translate mode, and a Q key was just selection mode. So Q, W. Now the next key on our, 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 our tool in our toolbox here is the E key. If we hit the E key, the echo key, we hit, we get a little circles around in the center of our object. And once again, these are color coordinated based on the axes. So if I grab the little red circle here and start rotating it, you can see it rotates only in the X. And again, if we look over in our channel box, we're seeing numbers move in our channel, their X. If I grab the blue one, rotates in the Z, grab the green one, rotates in the uh, y, and if I click in the center, I can go in all different directions too. So again, I recommend grabbing the lines, but technically you can grab in the center if you're not, not really, you know, it's not really a concern to you. You can move it all crazy however you want. So if you look at these numbers, they're a lot bigger than the translate ones. And what these are, these are in degrees. So while translate is measured in units, rotate is measured in degrees. So 360 degrees makes a full circle. So if I come out here and let's say make this 90 and I'm gonna zero these two out, just type in zero and hitting uh, enter, you can see I have rotated this, this sphere on its X to the side. Can't really tell when you click off of it, but yeah, it's rotated to the X on its side. So yeah, again, once again, we can grab the gnomon and just manipulate this or we can change these numbers. So the next one on the list, I'm going to reset this back to zero, is the next tool on the list is we can hit the R key. And the R key will turn on the scale uh, nomen. And this will allow us to manipulate the object uh, uniformly or non-uniformly. So this is one of the few tools where clicking on the center is perhaps a good thing. Um, because we can just grab it and 
drag it up and down and we can change its scale size. If we grab any one of the other color boxes, such as green, we can you know deform it in that particular that particular um, direction. So you can see I can make an, something more a little more oblonged, as such as this. And once again, if we look in our channel box, we can see our sphere selected and we got our channel box. We have numbers that are close to our translate, but honestly, these are going to probably stay around one. And what this is, is scale is uh, by percentage. So if these were one, this is back to its original size, 100%. Anything that gets bigger is a, an increase. So you can see scale Y went up to my case, three. And if I decrease something, scale X is three, 0.3. It's a decrease, so it's about, about 30 to 40% smaller. So we're deforming this. And again, anything we do in object mode, as long as we maintain our transformations, can be reset. So if I want this object to be back at the very center, what we call the origin of Maya, we can zero out the translates. And I'm just going in here and typing in the number, clicking on them, typing, and hitting enter, zero, zero, zero. Zero out the rotates, and one on the scales. And you can see our sphere is back at the center. All right. Um, this is moving stuff in object mode. Uh, we'll talk about how to manipulate these objects even further in the next video. See you next time.